Hello and welcome to lecture 24 on the series test summary. So in this lecture, we're going to mix together all the different series types that we've been working with and we're going to just give a relevant test to show whether a series converges or diverge. So the idea here is you don't know ahead of time what type of series we're dealing with and I'm going to give you some insight, at least things that I'm thinking for what tests I'm going to try and why. And I'm going to try to give you some like key features to consider when you're thinking about these tests. Let's look at this first example. I should say before I start, as usual, I want you to pause this. I want you to go try all four of these. At least think about what test you would try and then come back when you're ready. So for this first one, I'm seeing a polynomial over a polynomial. So some options I could think to do would be direct comparison test, maybe limit comparison test, because I have polynomials over one another. However, the first thing I'm going to try, and I think you should always consider very quickly, is the test for divergence. Okay, the test for divergence. So our very first test. What you do for the test for divergence is you take the a sub n and you take the limit as n goes to infinity. So what happens when we take the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared minus 1 over n squared plus n? Well, we have the same degree in the numerator and the denominator, so the ratio of the leading coefficients is 1. And this is not equal to 0. So anytime you get that the limit of the a sub n is not equal to 0, that's good because the test for divergence gives you a result. So we say, so by the test for divergence, the series we started with diverges. And that's really it. That's probably one of the fastest tests that we have. So if you, if you get 0 here, it's inconclusive and you have to try something else. But this time, we got that it's 1, so we can use it. So it diverges. So another thing that you could try here is you might want to try the limit comparison test. And the reason why you would maybe think about this one is because you have a polynomial over a polynomial. You have like some kind of um, polynomial situation going on. So we'll look at the, least comp the, the limit comparison test. I'm going to take the, the two dominating terms here, n squared over n squared. So this will be my, my comparison series here. So the summation of b sub n. Um, if I have n squared over n squared, that's just 1, right? And the summation of 1 plus 1 plus 1 forever, that diverges. This diverges because p is less than 1. Uh, in fact, p would be equal to 0. What I, mean, what I mean by that is the summation of 1 is 1 over n to the p when p is equal to 0, right? So that's a convergent p series. So, Let's do the limit comparison test. We take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n. So this is going to be n squared over, I'm oh, sorry, what was the original? It was n squared minus 1 over n squared plus n over um, n squared over n squared. But then, I mean, if I reduce this to 1 and I just take this ratio here, this is just going to be 1, which is larger than 0. It's some fixed number larger than 0. So again, you just have the same conclusion. You have that conclusion is summation of a sub n diverges as well. The point of that is that there's multiple tests that could work for the same series. So I was just trying to show you an alternative there. Here's this one. So what am I thinking for this? Well, I see two numbers here. I have C3 over 2, and I see powers for both of them. So this kind of looks like a geometric series. So remember the formula for a geometric series, I'm going to have this in the back of your mind. It looks something like summation n equals 1 to infinity a to the r, r to the n minus 1. So it's something like this, where you have some fixed number raised to a power, and then maybe some a term. So it looks sort of like this. I just need to manipulate this a little more. So the goal is to get these powers to match. So let's start doing a little bit of algebra. So here. I'm going to split this up. I'm going to have negative 3 to the first power times negative 3 to the n power. I'm just going to split that up into two different terms. Here, I'm going to do something I did in the last video. So this is the same thing as 2 to the third power, which is 8. 
and then that's raised to the n. So I'm just going to make that 8. Bring the constant negative 3 out. So I have negative 3 summation n equals 1 to infinity. And then both of these remaining terms are to the n to the um, nth power. So I have, I could just rewrite it as negative 3 over 8, all raised to the n. So now my r, comparing it to this formula, it's clearly equal to a negative 3 over 8. That's the number that's getting multiplied each time here. So the absolute value of r is less than 1, which means this is convergent. It's a convergent geometric. We could go one step further, and I'm going to. You can find what this actual sum is using our formula. So don't forget, we can actually find the sum. Unlike many of the other series we encounter, we can actually compute the value. So we'll have negative 3 times. The formula is first term over 1 minus r. So we have negative 3. And I'm ignoring that negative 3. I'm just focusing on the series part now. So if I plug in 1 as my first term, I plug in 1 for n. The first term, if you plug in 1, you get negative 3 over 8. 1 minus r is negative 3 over 8. So you see that double negative that's about to happen. And I get a negative here. So just be careful of all these negatives. Here I get negative 3 over 8 over 1 plus 3 over 8 is 11 over 8. And you see these over 8s cancel. And I get positive 9 on top, and then I get an 11 on the bottom. So not only is this series convergent, we can figure out what that converges to, and it's 9 over 11. What type of series does this look like? This is kind of a dead giveaway. If you see a negative 1 to this power, it's going to be alternating, because you're actually going to have negative terms going back and forth. So this right here is an alternating series. And as soon as we see that, we use the alternating series test. That had two conditions. So first, I'm going to write out what my b sub n is. So the positive part is just that, ignoring the part that alternates. So the b sub n is 1 over n ln of n. So we need to examine that. The first thing you do is you're going to ask yourself, the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n is? And this limit is going to be 1 over n. So I have a fixed number on top, and the denominator very clearly goes to infinity. Both of these separately go to infinity. So a fixed number over infinity, this goes to 0. And that's good. That's the first condition. The second is you need to show that it's decreasing. So we have 1 over, and then n plus 1 times ln of n plus 1. That is strictly less than 1 over n times ln of n. So that's true for all n because, and the n I'm talking about are these from, from 2 to infinity. It's true because both, because both um, n, um, let me see here, it's true because both n is less than n plus 1, and ln of n is less than ln of n plus 1. Look at the graph of ln n of x of, for both of those. So because those are both true, that means this is going to be true. OK, so when both of these conditions are satisfied, then you say by the alternating series test, the original series converges. So we have the limit of the b sub n goes to 0, and it is indeed a decreasing function. Let's look at this one. So right away, as soon as I see a factorial, so in my mind, if I see a factorial, it immediately goes to the ratio test. So we did just see this one in the last video. Factorials, um, another one that's popular is like exponents. Or if you see these like these products, these really long-looking products of numbers in some pattern, um, that's a good, a good indication that it's a ratio test. So this is my a sub n. Um, for the ratio test, we need to do the limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. No matter what number we plug into here, 
we're always going to get a positive number. And I don't think I've ever pointed this out yet, but you may know this already. If you plug in 0 into a factorial, 0 factorial, that's defined to be 1. I should let you know that, just in case you need to know that. But if you plug in 0 into the factorial, you get 1. So that's just the definition. Anyway, so they're all positive. I don't need the absolute value bars. In the numerator, I'm going to plug in n plus 1. So I have n plus 1 factorial over. This is going to go up to the n plus 1. So we have 2, 5, 8. You're just counting up by 3s. 3, n plus 2. What happens if you plug in the next one? You get 3, n plus 1 plus 2. So you've increased the number of factors down here by 1. In the denominator, I have the original. I have a sub n. So now I'm going to plug a sub n in, which is the original n factorial, 2, 5, 8, 3, n plus 2. I will do or some simplification first to save myself. So right here, you should notice in the denominator, all of these match, and all of these from that denominator match. So what we're left with is n plus 1 factorial over, the only thing I see left here is this one, which if you distribute that 3, you get 3n, and then you get a 3 here, but another 2 is 5. So you get 3n plus 5 times, you keep the first fraction, and if you divide, you flip the second fraction. So flip the n factorial over 1, and you get 1 over n factorial. Let's go over here and use this real estate. So this is the limit. This n goes to infinity. n plus 1 factorial, we've done this trick a couple times. This is n plus 1. And then the rest of them, times n factorial, divided by 3n plus 5 over n factorial. So then, and then this is going to be um, just reduced to the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over 3n plus 5. They're both to the first power, the numerator and denominator, so take the ratio of the leading coefficients, and this is a third, which is strictly less than 1. So we have absolute convergence for summation a sub n. So how did you do on those? Were you able to identify at least which test goes to what? Um, I hoped it helped you uh, for me to point out different key features I see of each one that would indicate to me like what test to use ahead of time. When I come back, we're going to do more examples. We're just going to keep drilling examples. So I'll see you soon. Hello, everyone. Here are three more examples. So go give them a shot, and then come back when you're ready. So for this first example, I'm thinking um, the root test, because I see a lot of things raised to the power of n, or n is part of the exponent. So usually that's a giveaway. So I'm going to say exponents containing n. So I'm going to use the root test for this. So what you do for the root test is you consider L, which is the limit, as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n. So that's what you consider. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity um, of the nth root of, and let me take this for a second. So let me just take the a sub n. And let me just rewrite this. So here I have negative 2 to the 2n. I'm going to do my trick where I just square it first and keep it to the n. So negative 2 squared is 4 to the n over n to the n. So I'm going to write it like that first. And then notice, if I plug in 1 and 2 and 3, like all the n values here, this is always going to be positive. So I don't need the absolute value bars. I just need the 4n and then the n to the n. OK, and then just remember that this can be rewritten if you like to write it like this more. This is 4 over n all raised to the n, because they're both raised to the n. And if you have an nth root, that means you have 1 over n around all of it. So then what is this? This is the limit as n goes to infinity. I have this n and this n multiplied together by the exponent rules. So this is just the limit of 4 over n once those cancel. This is 0. I have a fixed number and then over infinity. 
This is less than 1. So this means by the root test, summation a sub n is absolutely convergent. OK. I hope you got that as well. Let's move on to this next example. So this is kind of reminiscent of an example I did in a previous video. If you ever see something like sine or tangent like this, a good idea would be to use the limit comparison test. Especially if you have sine or cosine of something with like some kind of rational thing in here. So that's a, a good time to use that. So what you do for your comparison series is you ignore sine. Pretend it's not in the, it's not here. And then b of, b sub n is everything else. So it's 1 over n if you ignore sine divided by the square root of n. So that's going to be my b sub n. And this is the same thing as 1 over, at the end of the first power, I would div keep change flip, or I could divide that down here. This is to the 1 half power. So overall, this is the same thing as 1 over n to the 3 halves power, if I put these two together. So what I'm saying here is that the summation of b sub n, this, it converges. So this series right here, it converges because it's um, p is equal to 3 halves, and p is greater than 1. So it's a p series. It's a convergent p series. So because I picked that, that means my guess, remember I'd always make a guess, I'm guessing it's convergent. OK, so let's do the limit comparison test now. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity. This is my a sub n. That's always my a sub n. So it's a sub n over b sub n. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. a sub n is sine of 1 over n divided by square root of n, divided by b sub n is this. I'm going to take the form where it's not simplified and see what happens to it, OK? So I'm going to take b sub n, which is 1 over n, divided by root n. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, look at what cancels. So here I have fraction number 1. Here I have fraction number 2. If you want to, you can do keep, change, flip, do whatever algebra you're comfortable with. But what I see is happening right now, and what's easier for me to see, this denominator is square root of n, and this denominator is square root of n. So the denominators of each entire fraction are the same, so they cancel out. If you, if you were to do keep, change, flip, and flip it, you'd see that they cancel out. So I just like to do that. And then this is the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of 1 over n, this denominator is gone. It's divided by 1 over n. Here I have the limit as n goes to infinity. So each of these both go to 0. And in that situation, we talked about that, um, that limit law. This is going to go to 1. So the thing I'm referencing is if sine, so, so if I have the limit as x goes to 0, of sine of x over x, this equals 1. I talked about this rule in an earlier video, and I told you it would come up. But that's true. So if n goes to infinity, this is going to 0, and this is going to 0, and they match. So this is going to go to 1. So in the statement of the limit comparison theorem, you get a c value. It's finite and greater than 1. So what this means is that both a sub n and b sub n behave the same. But then what does that mean? If they both behave the same, b sub n converged. I picked a convergent thing. And then basically, you take an arrow, go over here. That means so this one also converges by the limit comparison test. OK, let's take a look at this final example. So this looks very weird. Um, however, I see uh, a number raised to a power for a lot of these. So it kind of looks like a geometric series, um, but not quite. 
maybe what I could do is to have a fraction is compare it to a different geometric series. So here's my plan. I'm going to start with this as my a sub n. And I'm going to think about working backwards this time. So I'm going to start with 5 to the n over 3 to the n plus 4 to the n. So now what I'm going to do is next to it, I'm going to write 5 to the n over 4 to the n plus 4 to the n. And I'm going to ask you, which direction would the inequality go? So what have I done from here to here? I've increased the denominator. 4 to the n is larger than 3 to the n, right? So I've increased the denominator. What that makes is that makes a smaller fraction if you have a larger denominator. So I've created this. What is this equal to? This is equal to 5 over n. I have two of these, so I have two of the 4 over n's. So that's 1 half times 5 and 4 are both to the n. So this is 5 over 4 to the n. So this right here, this is some kind of geometric thing where r is 5 over 4. The absolute value of r is greater than 1 this time. So what does that mean? It means we would have a convergent geometric. And then this is larger than that. So now let me go back and make a choice. So we're going to choose b of n to be equal to what I have over here, 1, one half, 5 over 4 to the n. So that means summation of b of n, if you have the summation of that, I have a constant 1 half times this is going to be, it's a divergent, it's a gi divergent geometric series. And I know that because r is equal to 5 over 4. So I've chosen something that is divergent. If you follow my work now, you start here and you get that a of n is going to be larger. If you're larger than a divergent, you're also divergent. So this time by the direct comparison test, summation a sub n also diverges. And that's because we're comparing it to something that's larger than this divergent geometric series. So that one had to work a little backwards. Um, for stuff like that, you should just do scratch work. Take some time to, to play with it. And then once you've got everything figured out, then you go back and give your reasoning. OK, so I hope this helped. This is certainly not exhaustive. There are other series that we talked about that I didn't actually get to an example of. So there are some other ones that you might want to go try to find in the wild, basically. Go try to find problem sets where you just have a bunch of different series and identify for yourself what tests would work. And lastly, if you did any of these examples a different way than me, that's OK, probably. Um, I would actually be interested in seeing in class like what you came up with if you found an easier way than I did for these examples. Um, and even if you didn't find an easier way, if you just found a different way, I'd love to know as well. <laughs> All right, I will see you in class. Um, send me any questions that you have. And until next time, have a good one.